Good morning, at least my time of day. Uh, out here at Pioneer Farms again, working our way through the Abana Level 1 National Curriculum. We're on Section 1.9, which is the handheld uh, chisel. And this is actually a pretty interesting um, little piece of equipment here. Let's see if we can zoom in on the chisel head and let's talk about what's going on with it. So we've got a taper down to the end. We've got our chisel end here. It's got a bit of a bevel on it. Um, this is gonna assist when we're chiseling things, walking it along the line that we're chiseling as opposed to having it just completely flat. One side of the chisel is sharp. The other side is a half round. So when we're cutting something, we can use this side to clean up a little bit and then put a, flip it over to the other side, the half round side, and then give whatever we're cutting a rounded end. This ability to round things at the end of a cut will prevent um, cracks and um, V's, right? You never want a V in your metal. You always want a U-shape to prevent any sort of cracking or anything uh, that's going to take place. So this one little chisel does all that work. I mentioned last video, I keep uh, some back ends of chisels and punches and things like that ready to go. So we're gonna use one that is uh, halfway done already um, and get straight into working on the chisel end of things. So let's get this hot and uh, we'll take a look at the hammer work. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prep our steel so it doesn't spread too far. So I've got my indexing already built in. I'm gonna come at a right angle to that. I'm gonna work my way down the bar, just flattening it out. A little bit here, trying to prevent it from growing too much as I uh, come in and put the taper in. So doesn't need to be anything crazy. You're looking for something like that um, under a half inch wide at the widest, I think is about what you're gonna wanna go for. Let's get it hot one more time. And uh, then we'll put our taper in. So I'm gonna come back in line with my um, indexing. Let's put a little taper on this. Looking for a chisel that's about one inch wide. It's starting to look pretty good. Let's start working our way back. Everything nice and cleaned up here as we go in for another heat. You'll notice when I'm cleaning up the edges, I am dropping my tongs down, right? I don't want to hold it flat where this is parallel to the anvil because then I'm going to bend things. Drop it down like this, make sure it's in line with the anvil, and then we can clean it up. We want our tapering to meet up with our indexing at the end of the bar. If you do, like I've got here, uh, I was holding it at a little bit of an angle so my indexing doesn't quite line up. I'm gonna put this flat, give it some hammer blows. Let's try and fix that and bring that back more in alignment. It does like to slip in the tongs that's a pretty common issue to face. Let's bring this taper back just a little bit more here in the back and then uh, we'll clean things up and be about done with most of the forging work. Kind of 
come in, just clean up all of our lines here. I'm leaving this pretty uh, fat here at the end so that when we go in and we do our heat treatment and our hardening, we don't run the risk of anything cracking or warping on us. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's uh, heat this up again. We'll talk a little bit about normalizing and um, the heat treating process. So as we work our steel, heating it up, cooling it down on the anvil, doing all the hammering, reshaping it, um, that can set up stress in the steel. Um, it tends to make the steel harder, especially since the anvil can cool it down pretty quickly. Um, we've got to do some file work on this. We've got to do a little bit of chiseling and things like that. So we want to normalize it, which is taking it up to sort of an orange color. And we'll get into the full details on this and uh, the section on heat treating. And then we're just going to set it here on top of our fire and let that cool down a little bit slowly. I'm not gonna go through the full uh, annealing process, which would really be getting it as soft as possible um, by normalizing it a few times and then letting it cool down as slowly as possible. Uh, potentially even using something like, we've got a bucket here of vermiculite, which we'll put hot tools into. And this acts as insulation, helps it cool down slowly. The slower it cools, the softer it's going to be. If we're going to be doing some file work on this in order to, um, you know, put the edges and things that we need on it, we want it to be soft, uh, especially since I don't have great files. The softer this is, the better it's going to be when we do that filing work. This one, we've got to do some pretty precise filing, so we don't want to do a ton of it hot or maybe any of it hot. Um, or, or there's a good chance that we're either going to burn ourselves or we're going to misshape and misshape things um, as we push it around with the file. So we'll let this cool down a little bit on top of the fire, soften um, a little bit for us, and then we'll toss it in the vise um, and we'll start doing some filing. We do have a pretty round uh, tip on the end, a couple different ways that we could get rid of that. One, we could use uh, uh, another chisel and just take that off. We can also take it to one of the grinders, which is probably what I'm going to do in this situation, and just grind it flat. Um, but we do want to flatten that, um, and we'll talk a little bit about it once this is cool. All right, so we've got our steel normalized. What we need to do now is start getting ready for our file work. So if we take a look at the piece of steel here, we've got a pretty big rounded end. This is waste material. What we want to look at is where our two corners are, find the lower corner, draw a line across the piece of steel. Everything past that line we need to get rid of. Um, obviously with it hot, you could just cut that off. I'm gonna go uh, into the back and hit it on the grinder and flatten that out. Um, and then we'll take it over to the vise and we'll be ready to do some hand filing on it. We've got a pretty thick uh, edge here, um, which is looking about right. What I wanna start doing now is just filing this down. Take a little bit of work here. I'm definitely going to try and keep this pretty sharp flip this over and start on the other side here. Um, I don't want a real long um, edge on this, right? This is going to be working in hot steel. It is going to get hot. The more material we can leave in it, while still having a good cutting edge, 
the less heat this is going to pick up, the less our tool is going to want to deform on us. So, nice short chamfer. Frequent pauses here to take a look at it. It's coming along pretty nicely. So we can see I'm starting to get a point. It's offset though, so I need to do more filing on this side to try and match those up. a little bit closer. We're going to take off a little bit more, bring that chamfer back a little bit more too. This is definitely one where it is easy to just keep going too far and then having to flip over to the other side and correct because you've gone too far. So stopping, looking at what you're doing pretty frequently will really help Make sure that you get this done nicely. Got a little tiny bit more to do here. This is just about where I need it. Hopefully you can see that. I think that looks pretty good there. We've got it lined up pretty well in the middle. We've got a nice edge to it. This is very flat though, and I do want it to be rounded a bit. So we're gonna come in and um, work on these sides here a little bit so that the middle is just a fraction higher. Flip it over and work on the other side. So it looks pretty well lined up in the middle. Clean this up a little bit here. That's looking pretty good. So my edges come down a little bit. It doesn't need to be a ton. Like I said, that'll help as we're using the tool. Now we need to um, come in and establish those two sides, a half round side and a sharp side. So we'll work on the sharp side first and I'm just gonna pick a spot, you know, about back here. And it's the same thing again, start working in. Try and have a nice line here on one side. Not let my file flip around too much. So I'm giving a angled file here, just cutting in a little notch there. So I've got something to present my file from slipping. Off camera, I did take this back to the belt grinder. Um, since there was quite a bit of grinding to do and we've got limited time this morning. Just took off some of that meat, but we'll finish it up here with the, the file. I might've taken this stuff a little thinner than I need to actually, especially since we haven't done our hardening yet. Hopefully that'll be okay. On the rounded side, right, I want to get rid of these edges. Just make this a nice smooth circle here. So Clean up the edges a little bit. I'm definitely of the opinion that a super sharp edge on anything that's gonna be used hot 
doesn't make a ton of sense um, because that edge will be real thin it'll deform quickly and you'll lose it so if you're working with stuff at the right temperature having a little bit of a, of a flat on the end of your tools I think makes them last longer before you need to clean it up so um, I could use a little bit of clean up there I got a little a little thin on the back end right here got a little greedy right there right you can see how it's thicker here than it is here not a huge deal take a little bit off the sides all right I think that's about the thickness I'm looking for as I go into the quench on this. Uh, so let's go heat this up, quench it in oil. Uh, then we've got to do our um, heat treatment on it and um, do a little bit of final grinding work and this will be done. Got the business end of things nice and hot here. Into our oil we go, swirl that around. Again, gloves, not a terrible idea. It is really, um, I think, important to have an oil canister that has a lid. So if you do get a big flare up or something, for some reason things start catching on fire, you want to be able to close that quickly. Doing it where it's not going to burn anything if the oil spills is also a good idea if you can. This oil quenching, if you're going to burn your building down um, or cause a major fire is normally related to working with oil either preheating the oil or when you go in to do a quench in oil so we're good there let's put it in the water get a little bit of that oil off slightly warm still Let me go clean this up on the wire wheel so we can uh, take a look at it. Um, and then I'll do the final um, portion of the heat treatment of this, uh, the tempering of it. Um, I'm just gonna take it home, put it in the oven at about 300, 350, bring it up to light straw color. Um, as opposed to the punch, where I was okay with the fact that some of it was softer further back because it had more mass, I've got a pretty, um, thin area up here that I want to keep nice and hard. So bringing the whole thing up in a controlled environment like an oven, a toaster oven, um, tempering oven is um, going to give me something that's a little bit more controlled. I may still come back in and hit the back end with the torch and soften that up. Um, but I also didn't bring this up real hot when I did my quench. So it is probably pretty soft already. Let me go clean it up. We'll take a final look. We've got this cleaned up. Um, I'm going to do my um, heat treatment on it, put it in the oven, uh, temper it to, um, like I said, 300, 350, something like that, get it to a straw color. Um, and once I've done that, I'm gonna come in and do some final file, file work here on the edges to sharpen those up a little bit. Uh, but that is the handheld chisel. Uh, we may do a bonus video um, next week just showing how to use the chisel all the different things that you can do with it how to properly cut with it and stuff like that um, but this should complete uh, the section 1.9 material there is an option to also do a butcher tool uh, we will try and come back to that in a, a later video um, but we'll be moving quickly on to 1.10 which is i believe a hammer eye drift so looking forward to that thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you again soon